bring in here now. I'm joined by a special guest, and I'm really lucky to be joined by them. Tal Khartouf, the survivor of a Hamas attack now, joining us from Mivaseret Zion near Jerusalem. Uh, thanks for being with us, Tal. Look, uh, firstly, you know, if you're okay with this, I think it's important for our viewers to understand. If you can tell us about the attack personally that, that you survived. Of course, and thank you for having me on your show and keep up the really great work. Um, 13 years ago, I'm a Jewish, Israeli, British-born tour guide, and I was taking a Christian American client on a, on a hike on Shabbat uh, in the state of Israel, for those people who don't know near Beit Shemesh. And it was there in one of the most beautiful places in our country that we were accosted by two machete-wielding Hamas terrorists who uh, pounced on us and held us at knife point for half an hour. Our lives are swinging in the balance. And uh, I'm sorry, it's so hard for me to no, talk about it. But I'm absolutely. Gonna get it. Take your time. Sure. Can I smoke in the interview? No, really. <laughs> no problem. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so you, you, I, I don't know. You know, there's not words. There's no words yeah. for these kinds of atrocities. And it's even hard now to, to find the right words 13 years later, but the life, our lives are hanging in the balance. We, I'm confused. Sorry, I know we Jews aren't politically correct, but I peed my pants. I'm sweating. I can't take my, my, my sweater off. I don't know what these uh, terrorists want, okay? Because the thing is, when they pounced on us, I managed to stab one in the balls. And, and he didn't stab me back. He just took away my knife, right? So, and because I stabbed him and he didn't stab me back, this adds to the confusion. Um, but after half an hour, they, they get my backpack and they start going through my stuff and they take out my ID. And, uh, and they can see I'm Israeli and I'm Jewish. And I guess from that, they assume that my Christian American client, Christine Lucan, is also uh, an Israeli. I mean, Christine couldn't say anything. She was too terrified as well. So then the things, it heats up. You know, they uh, tell, tell me to take off my shoes. They take out my shoelaces. They tie our hands behind our back. And then they take off Christine's fleece. They're hacking it out with their machetes. They gag us. They take off my Magin David. And then, I got to tell you, then... Uh, and I, I got to add something to this after, yeah. but they separate us by, by two meters and they push us on our knees. I, I have to say this, they don't say free Palestine, okay? Didn't hear any word about Palestine. They said, Allah Akbar, yeah. it's Bahu al yud yeah. Allah is great, slaughter the Jews. Right. And then they start slaughtering, they start butchering. And I'm on my side, you know, I fall on my side with my hands tied behind my back and threw up behind my gag. And he's leaning on me, and I'm telling you, he is plunging that machete so hard into me, I can hear my bones crunch. And it's getting stuck in bone, and I can hear him exasperated because he's having to try and tug out the knife, and then another time. And I can, I can hear my, my skin rip. I know when it's going in an organ and when it's... And I'm thinking at the time I was 46 years old, and I, I, one of the thoughts is I, I am 46, and I'm being murdered. This is... It's, Hazui, uh, of course, uh, I don't know how to say Hazui, but the, this... Indescribable. It was so... Yeah, thank you. It, it, it's, and then I had to make, and it, this is the hard, I mean, it's all hard, but I had to make a choice, and I knew that the only chance I had was to play dead. So I kept my eyes open because that's how uh, people die. And I'm just laying there on my side and, and two meters away. I watch my American Christian friend uh, chopped up like a vegetable and she's writhing and squirming and she's, you know, they're doing the Allah Akbar. She's saying, Jesus, help me. And I'm saying, Shema Israel, you know, it's like this m monotheism of a symphony. And uh, after, in thir after 13 stab wounds and, and uh, numerous injuries, they leave, but they come back to do uh, vidui ariga, you know, like to, che uh, to check we're sure really dead. dead. Yeah. Yeah, and they, they turn me on my back, and now I'm looking, you know, I'm looking up at the, these pines. It's the most beautiful sunset coming on, absolutely listless. And the next thing I see is the silhouette of his hand and this jagged machete. 
and it covers the sun and I watch him, I watch him plunge it into my chest and that one missed my heart by four millimeters. Now they think they've, I'm dead and they leave and then I have one last, one last, I need a drink of water, Absolutely. I'll be all right, one last commission in life and that is to, to get up and die nearer where I parked the car so the police could find my body and somehow gagged and bound, I've got bones coming out of me. I managed to stand and I turn my back on what's left of Christine Lucan and step by step, you know, I'm trying to walk back th through the forest and just get nearer where somebody can find my body. And, I, and I'm so freezing cold from the shock and the lack of blood, but I managed to find help. And I did this walk, it was over a mile, had 13 machete wounds, over 30 broken bones. I had bones splintered in, in my lungs and diaphragm. I had a collapsed lung. I had a crushed sternum. I had a, a dislocated shoulder, a broken shoulder blade, other injuries too. And it, I walked a mile. And the uh, end of the story is, of course, Christine had been murdered. Uh, and it was due to me stabbing him that the police were able to extract his blood on my blood-soaked uh, shirt. Wow. They got the DNA and they apprehended them within 20, 24 hours. Incredible. And then they confessed to murdering another Israeli, Neta Blatzorek, 10 months previously. And I must say this because I don't know how much time we have, and this is so important for yes. me. And I will, I will definitely send you the footage and you can, you can blast it all over your channel, all right? Israeli TV did a documentary, a chilling and very nuanced documentary about this attack. And they included in the 40-minute documentary, which is called Black Forest, which I subtitled with the help of amazing friends into English. Uh, they included part of the actual uh, like the reconstruction. Yes, yeah. And in Israel, I have to say, we bring back the murderers to the crime scene. So these are not actors. And you can see it for yourself from their own lips. The Shabak, the, the Secret Service, the police, they're walking with the terrorists and they say, why did you choose this place? He answers, we wanted a kill. Kill who? Jews. Yeah. So our man says, but why? And he says, no reason. Just because. And that is the essence of these pogroms and these crimes against humanity and these war crimes that we are experiencing at the moment. It is about centuries and centuries of the murder of innocent Jews and I have to say, before I'm accused of being Islamophobic from all kinds of strange yeah. people who troll me, it was a Muslim surgeon who saved my life. Wow. This is staggering on so many levels. Look, we have just about a minute left here with you, Tal. This has propelled you into, into helping others deal with the trauma uh, to, to make you, you know, out, there's so many others suffering. It's propelled me in the sense that I know I'm articulate. I didn't speak about this for um, three years. It was just too traumatic. I spoke in the UN, I spoke around the world, and I always spoke about the American European tax fund funders paying my would-be murderers, all right? So we shouldn't be caught by surprise by this, all right? They've been encouraged by these Western governments for years. It's just going on. My, 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 my boys are getting thousands. So it hasn't encouraged me in any sense of humanitarian acts at the moment, but I realized, even though I don't like speaking about this, my people, your people, our people, are under the most heinous existential attack since the State of Israel was born, and that that is what propels me to speak. And I'll do it, and I'll do it with any interview media channel that will have me. People to, need to know what terrorism does. Tal Khartouf, running out of time, running into a live break here. I'm speechless listening to your account here. I can only thank you for having the fortitude to come on and share it with our viewers around the world who care deeply about the situation, trying to learn for themselves. Thank you again.